Thank you for tuning in to Changing Lives at Crossroads. Get your Bible and join Pastor Tom Pennington for today's message. What is a saint anyway? Uh, let's open our Bibles, please, to the book of Ephesians. And uh, we're going to uh, look at this book for a period of time. And I know uh, <clears throat> last, week, last two weeks we talked about being a part of the family of God. And, uh, and I said last week that we were going to kind of connect that with the working of grace in our life. And uh, as I, I must have read the book of Ephesians four or five times this week, just over and over, just trying to feel that spirit of what Paul is saying there. And I'm finding that, you know, uh, to really understand the movement and principle of grace, uh, we're going to have to take a little study. So... Uh, and, as, and if you've been with us for a long period of time, you know that when we do a book study, it sometimes it's, uh, it's several weeks, which sometimes goes to several months. And uh, I remember doing one book study years ago, and it went a year and a half in it. Uh, it's the book of Revelation, of course, you want to just... But the whole principle of book studies or going through the scripture in a slow pace is to understand that there's, a, there's principles, there's jewels, there's treasures, there's truth that we need to acquire in our life. And as I was trying to put thoughts together, I, I came across this, uh, this thought, and I'd like to just share it with you. It says, as we unlock the door or the book of Ephesians, we will discover eternal truths that will be life-changing. These truths will not only take us to heavenly places, but we will be able to apply them to our daily living in a very dark and corrupt world. One of, these, one of the themes that we will explore in our search for truth will be the rich, immeasurable, valuable, precious gold vein called grace. Grace will play a very important part in understanding and applying the truths of the book of Ephesians. So, now let's turn the key and let's push open the door and let God begin to show the working of God's grace in our life and the truth of his word. It's going to be a great adventure walking through this book over the next few weeks and then applying the principles of grace. So, let's look at verses 1 and 2 and we'll ask God to encourage us. The book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Jesus Christ. Lord God, we are so thankful that you are moving in our midst, touching our lives. Lord, I thank you that you are not only moving among us, but you're illuminating our understanding, yes. our knowledge, yes. that we may be able to comprehend the truth that you're about to reveal. We thank you, Lord, that you're speaking to us and our ears are attuned to your voice and we're hearing what the Spirit is saying. We also thank you, Lord Jesus, that our heart has been touched by your presence, your Spirit, and we are fertile ground in which your word can take root and grow. So we ask, Lord, that you will manifest all these things today in our heart, our life, as we hear the word, as we apply it to our life. In Jesus' name, amen. As, as I walk in my daily walk, and as you do too, you know that we are always <clears throat> in the need of something greater and better than ourselves. And... Sometimes our past kind of catches up with us and we, we think on those things that held us down at one time in bondage or despair, loneliness, and those can be overwhelming. And we feel like, where is God? Am I really am a child of God? Am I really searching or am I really finding what I need in the Lord? And, but I, I got good news for you today because the Bible says this, that God secures those that are his. And when the enemy whispers in your ear, you can always turn around and say, wait a minute, that's not a true thing. Because I know that I know that I know what's inside of here, what God has done. 
And there's that faith that you and I are going to have to release because the enemy is going to try so hard to kind of destroy that foundation of faith. But you have to know beyond anything who you are. And the first phrase that we want to look at today is that to the saints who are in Ephesus. You were once an ain't, but now you are a saint. Amen. Um, to the saints, and I think that's important for us to realize that this scripture is written to saints, and sometimes we get the idea that saints are things on the wall. And they were once people. But what made them what they were? I'm not saying we need to put sanctity of everyone. I, we, I mean, all of you need to be on the wall because you're saints. Not because of what you did, because of what he did. Come on now. That's right. And uh, all of us are recognized in the Lord as saints to him. And we're going to break that down just a little bit more so we can understand that and apply it to our life personally because um, we're not encouraged to pray to saints. You know, saint, saints cannot... Uh, those that are classified as saints cannot answer your prayers. Amen. Uh, they cannot help you in any way. They can give you maybe historical inspiration of the life they may have lived. But outside of that, they can do nothing for you. Amen. And so, but someone did something for us. And this is why we are called saints. So let's look at the word saint for a minute. And I ask the question, who, is the, who are the saints? And it is, it is the the title of all Christians. Think about it. All Christians. Who are Christians? Those are people who are Christ-like in thought and action, motive. Uh, saints are people who have experienced forgiveness through the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. That makes me a saint right there. Because one day I realized that I came in my selfishness and my, my poorness and my, my depravity of life. And I realized I couldn't do anything right in my own self. But Jesus Christ said, I will forgive you of all your sin. I shed my blood that you may be free from your sin. You know what I did? I accepted his offer. And there's no other way to become a child of God or a Christ-like or a person or a Christian unless they've been born again and covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. There's no other way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except through me. And there is no forgiveness, removal, or remission of sin without the shedding of blood. And the blood of Christ was shed on the cross for me and for you who are here today. Saints are the people who know the power of mercy because we all had a condemned price on our head. Guilty, 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 guilty. Death sentence, death sentence, death sentence because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And remember what it said, we said it a moment ago, John 6, 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Jesus said, if you want to live, you've got to come to me. But mercy was given to us in order for us to accept that invitation because of our death sentence. I am so glad that when we say yes to him, that he removes the death sentence from us. That's mercy. Because each one of us should have been crucified. Each one of us should, are deserving of death because of the sin nature that embodies us inside here. But mercy along with the power of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now that's, that's God's gift to us. It's a gift of love. We deserve death, but God says, I want to give you something better and that will help you throughout eternity. And that's my son, Jesus Christ. The gift of God. The gift of love. And when you put mercy and love together, you have the powerful working 
of grace. Because it's grace that brings you to the cross. It's grace that brings you to Jesus. It, it is grace that reveals your need of him in your life. And when you say yes to him and his grace that empowers you to say, I believe. And when you start that walk day by day, moment by moment, it is the grace of God that keeps you. None of us, not one person in this place today can live without the grace of God working in your life. There is no way you can be a Christian without God's grace working. You know why? Because without God's grace, you're sinners. I'm a sinner. Subject to failure. Subject to disobedience and rebellion. But it's the grace of God that keeps us walking. It's the grace of God that keeps us talking. It's the grace of God that keeps us living for the Lord Jesus Christ. Saints are people who are not of their own. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians. And I want you to read a verse with me found in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. <clears throat> Most of you probably already know this passage of Scripture. Saints are people who are not their, their own. They don't belong to themselves. <clears throat> or do you not know, <clears throat> excuse me, or do you not know that the, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom God, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. You were bought at a price. Therefore, therefore, glorify God in your bodies, in your spirit, which are God's. You are not your own. S saints, people who are saints, people who are, that are called saints, and what Paul is addressing there is the church, are people who have understand that they have been purchased, ransomed by Jesus Christ. They had a debt they could not pay. They needed someone to pay the debt. And that someone was Jesus Christ. They realized without his help, without his redeeming power, they were lost. So they understood that. And this is important for us as saints to know, to understand. Because I think sometimes we get to the place in our own life, we just take everything for granted. You know what happens when you take everything for granted? You fall asleep. You compromise. You're, sub, you're, you're, you're susceptible to, to failure. Don't take what God has given you so lightly. He has ransomed you and you are not your own. I look at it in my own personal life. When I gave myself to Jesus Christ, he has complete ownership. And I'll be honest with you, there have been times that I have fought with my owner. And there have been times where he has really let me know who the owner is. I'm not alone in this. It's called growing up in the Lord. Amen. It's conquering the flesh. It's putting the flesh underfoot. It's allowing the working of his grace to work in us. But the reality of it is we do not belong to ourselves. We belong to him. And that is important for us as believers as we live every day that our life is not our own. The decisions we make, the, the choices we make, the actions we do, the words we say, even the thoughts we think should always exemplify that we belong to Jesus Christ. It's the blood of Christ that cleanses from all sin. Therefore, separating us, them, making us holy. It's the blood of Christ that purifies. What can wash away my sin? Nothing, Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We sang the song earlier today. Are you washed in the blood? Have you been to the cleansing power? There's power in the blood. We sang that song, and it's to be a reality to us that we have been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And his blood wipes away our sin, cleanses us 
from unrighteousness. Therefore, making us holy. Therefore, giving us the truth that we belong to God. I can cut myself, shed my blood, and all it's going to do is make a big mess. It won't cleanse. It's not going to help anybody. But when Jesus Christ shed his blood, he gave hope and life and forgiveness and for all of mankind, for everyone, for everyone, he gave himself. The altars of the Old Testament were holy because they were erected for the service of God. The sacrifices that were given were holy because they were offered to him. The priests were holy because they were divinely chosen to discharge the functions of the temple service. But chapter 3 of 1 Corinthians tells us this. In verse 16, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells within you? Don't you know that God dwells within you and you, the body, your individual body, is a dwelling place for God himself? This is why it's important that our actions, our thoughts, our motives, everything that we can call ourselves or who we are needs to line up with what God expects, what God intends. We belong to God. We belong to Him. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 says this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, that's what a saint is, someone who's been changed. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. If any man, woman, boy, or girl be in Christ Jesus, they are a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. We belong to Jesus. A saint is someone who says, I belong to Jesus. I remember as a teenager, I was in a sophomore, going into my junior year, and... Uh, we used to have these T-shirts, you know, well, up in Oregon, Washington. You know, it's, it, back then it was even, it's just as liberal to back then as it was then, but it is today. But back then in, a, in our church groups, we had a, a shirt that had a guy like this. And it says, keep on trucking for Jesus. You know, and I thought, well, that's a great witnessing tool because people will ask, you know, what do you, th and look at it because it's kind of humorous and it would take that and give you an opportunity to witness. And I remember witnessing to a, another teenager and I was sharing uh, to this individual what God meant to me. And I told this individual, I says, you know, I am in love with Jesus Christ. He means everything to me. In fact, if the truth were to be known, I am literally married to, the call to Jesus Christ. He is my Savior. He's the one I adore. He's the one I love. He's the one I want to be with. And of course, when you start talking about, what are you talking about? Be married to Jesus. You know, they kind of shut you out, but that's how I was. And I still am. I need to get out my old t-shirt that says, keep on trucking for Jesus. <laughs> uh, it might fit. <laughs> someone has just asked will it fit I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength but we need to be not shy about declaring that we belong to Jesus we need to be open about it we need to be honest about it we need to be free with it our world is so con 
con has trained us so much to be politically correct and trying to teach us how to say something and be something that God never intended us for to be. You know, speak your mind if you need be. Can I just tell you to do that? And if you're going to speak it for Jesus, make sure you speak it loud and clear. That people know that you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to all who believe. To the Jew first and then the Gentile. So we need not be ashamed. And a saint is someone who knows where they've been. And they know what God has done. Therefore when they have opportunity. They share the gospel freely. And openly and boldly. Courageously. Because they know in their knower. Who they know. And there's no doubt about it. So a saint is someone who knows. That they've been purchased. They've been forgiven. They belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. And according to Paul, every Christian is a temple, a sacrifice, and a priest. You are every one of those things. And even Peter chimes in, in his writing, in 1 Peter chapter 2. So let's turn over here and see what, how Peter describes the body of Christ, the saint of God. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Now here's, remember, he's talking to church people. He's talking to saints. He's talking to the beloved of God. And Peter says it like this. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are his own special people. That you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of where? Out of your darkness into his marvelous light. For you were once not a people, but now are a people. Hallelujah. Who have not attained mercy, who have, who have not attained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Whoa. Yes. That, that excites me. I don't know about you. I, I, I just get so excited in my own spirit that, I, that God saw fit to save me. He didn't have to, but he wanted to. Just like you. He didn't have to save you, redeem you, but he wanted to. Freely he has given himself that you may become his son, his daughter, his child. And that's the working of grace. It's the working of God in your life. A saint is someone who is set apart for God himself. A saint is someone who is set apart for God himself. Again, it goes back to ownership. You do not belong to yourself. You belong to God. It's like God takes you out of the the the. the the dump, so to speak, which what sin is, it's a trash heap, it's a dump. And God takes you out of there and he puts you on his shelf and he begins to clean you up. Not man's responsibility, it's God's. You said yes to his offer to be forgiven and receive him as your savior. And he says, here I am, I'm going to clean you up, I'm going to give you hope, I'm going to give you life, I'm going to make your life brand new. And so the process of life is where we all are right here. On that shelf. And so the process of life is where we all are right here. On that shelf. And God is daily cleaning you and me up. Yes. He is perfecting us. He's taking the broken areas of our life and he's mending them. Isn't that great? I mean, and he's so delicate about it that when he's taking... He's, when he's sewing you up and stitching you up, he's taking it with such care and, and, and earnestness that he wants to make it it's done right. He's doing a great job. You know why he puts you on the shelf? Because you belong to him. See, he brought you out of the place of sin, put you where he wants you in his presence where he can work in your heart, your life, show who he is to you, and you can know who he is. 
and you understand that I'm special. Because when you're in front of God, you are special. You're a prized possession. And God is taking you for himself. It's an act of consecration before God. And it's God's ability to do that. Can I make myself righteous and holy? No, the Bible says my righteousness, my holiness is like filthy rags. I fall very short in comparison to what God could do. I couldn't pick myself up here and do a good work of cleaning. I would miss a lot of spots. But God gently puts me on a shelf and he works his love, his mercy, his grace. It makes me for himself. Jesus said these words in John 15, verse 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Isn't that great? I, I, did, I didn't choose him. He chose me. What a truth. What a reality. All who have, all we have to do in our part is submit. Submit. Submit to God. Just say, God, do your work. Do what you need to do in my life. That's the hardest part for all of us, isn't it? Is to sit there and let God do His will in our life. Work His, work his good pleasure. We want to veer off and we want to fight and we want to throw a tantrum. We want to rebel. But all we have to do to allow God work his work of perfection in our life is to submit to his authority, his claim over our life, and receive what he wants to give us through his love. You know what his love is? Is that amazing grace. I want that amazing grace to work in my life. I want him to work in my life. So I'm going to have to submit myself and put myself under his care and under his direction in order to allow him to work what he needs to do. And by doing my part, by submitting, God does his part by giving. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 2. And let's see what Paul said in verses 20 and 21. Here's the submission part. Here is giving of ourselves. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that you give yourself as a sacrifice. All right. Verse 20, Galatians chapter 2 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. It's no longer I who lives. If you're living for yourself, without God in your, in your picture, it's empty. It's not there. It's not real life. That's right. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives within me. Remember who you are. You've been bought with a price. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit, and He dwells within you. He lives within you. Yes. So the life I, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live, I live in the flesh by faith. In the Son of God, that is Jesus Christ who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not, I do not set aside, or we might say in, the, in other translations, this is, I do not frustrate the work of grace in my life. I do not frustrate the work of grace, of the grace of God in my life. God, do your work. Do what you need to do in my life. There was a song years ago sang by a group called Truth. And they sang, it's just, just the title phrase, I lost it all to find everything. As a saint of God, as a one that's been chosen by God, this must be the reality of who you are in Christ. I lost everything. I gave it up. I put it all aside that I may find 
Him. Him. It's Him. I lost it all that I may find Him. And He is everything. He is not just some things or maybe some things. He is everything. His life, His breath, His provision, His help, His strength, His comfort. His wisdom and knowledge. He's everything. So as a saint declared by God, I've come to that place where I don't have anything of myself. And it's all about Him. And it's living by faith. We used to sing the song, an old, old song, living by faith in Jesus alone. It's trusting Him daily. See, that's where it's all at. It's not, you know, some people just come to the service or gathering of saints, and that's the only time they, some of them may say, this is, I'm not saying this is true, but it could be. Is this the only time we trust God is when we come into the house? Can we trust Him? Like Alan said a moment ago, when we're out in the storm, the lightning is coming down and, the, and it's raging, can we trust Him when we can't see daylight? Can we still have faith to say, I belong to God and God is in me when everything's going south, so to speak? But can we trust God when difficulties come? Sure we can. As a child and a saint of God, we can. And we don't have to wait till a crisis comes in order to declare our trust and faith in God. You know, I've done a lot of funerals in my life. And I, I've seen the tragedies unexpectedly. Some caused by others, some caused by themselves. Some are natural. But regardless of how it happens, there's a crisis. There's a situation. And if the family is an unbelieving family, you talk about panic, you talk about uncertainty, you talk about fear and grief and sorrow. There's no hope. Boy, I'd hate to go into a situation without hope. When you have hope in Christ and you have faith in Christ, no matter what happens, you know there's a better day coming. You know there's something around the corner that God said he would take care of. See, to be absent from the body as a believer is to be present with the Lord. But for the unbeliever, out of darkness, gnashing of teeth, waiting for the judgment day to come. That's not hope. Where's your trust? Where's your faith? Come on, we're the saints of God. We're supposed to be living this every day. We're supposed to be declaring this every day. Not just when we come to the fellowship, not just when we're in a time of crisis, but every day, good and bad, sunshine, rain, shine, daylight, no light, darkness, adversity, good times. Doesn't make any difference. Every time, every day, should be a day where we say, I trust God. My faith is not based on what I experience. My faith is based on who I know. And I know in whom I have believed. I know He is able to keep that which I have committed to Him against that day. I know He is there for me. The free grace of God enables, or in our, it could even entitle all members of the visible body, uh, it, it entitles all of us as the body of Christ to receive all that God has. It is faith in Christ alone. So if you've got saints on the wall when you go home, take them off. You don't need them. Take them out of your car, Whatever. You don't, you don't need that stuff. Um, you don't need to put trust in any kind of form of man. For the Bible says the, 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 the arm of flesh is weak and the arm of flesh will surely fail. But the strong hand of God will always keep you. He will always keep you. So our faith is in Christ alone and that makes men saints. Not by works that I've done, Come on now. thoughts that I thought, 
actions that I've done or life I lived, it's all because of Christ. I'm a saint because of Jesus. And you can't take that from me. And I won't let you. Because I know that I know that I know that I know who in whom I have believed. And I know who I belong to. Hallelujah. Here's what faith does. It produces three things. Purity, purity of heart, which is our motive. Second thing, it produces the outward profession of holiness or manner of life. Because you're no longer the same. You remember who you belong to. And thirdly, it produces holy conversations, a matter of talk. We'll start talking the way God wants us to talk. These three things make up saintliness or sanctification in our life. It's the grace of God going. It, it's, it, the grace of God is going to show us over the next few weeks through this book. The grace of God is going to show us who we really are in Christ Jesus. We're going to go to the heavenlies and then we're going to come right back down and put it all into practice. Because that's what the book of Ephesians does. It takes you where Christ wants you to see and then he wants you to take what you have saw what he's given and then he wants you to apply it to your life. And we're going to see God's grace wondrous grace Work so much in our life. Until then, we submit, we concentrate, consecrate ourselves to the Lord. Let's stand together. Let's ask God to do that work right now. Let Him search you. Let Him reveal Himself to you today. Father, we ask in Jesus' name that you will speak to each part each heart, each person here, the need to have the working of your grace in our life. Lord, pull back the curtain and help us to see us as we really are in need of you. Lord, that's, I see, Lord, you show me every day how much I need you. So Lord, here I am again. I'm asking you to show yourself strong and mighty in my behalf because I need you. I want you to work what you need to do in my life today. So search me, mold me, consecrate me. Lord, do that which is needed. In Jesus' name, amen. Here's what I want you to do. As Awanda is playing, I want you to come around the front, kneel at the front, kneel at your chair. I'd like for you to spend a few moments with the Lord, please. Say, Lord, here I am. Work in me your working of grace. Work in me that I may know that I know that I know without doubt that I'm a child of God, a saint. Can you come? Will you come? Come. Singers, can you help us today on the song? Come. Find a place and just kneel and talk to God. Just come and talk to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you that you're working in our hearts right now. Hallelujah. That wonderful working of grace. Lord, we're so much in need of you today. We're in need of you so much today. Lord, we're, we fall short so many times, but Lord, your grace is there. Lord, work in our hearts today. Hallelujah. Lord God, we need you today. We need you, Lord Jesus. We're very helpless without you. Lord God, we thank you that your grace is abounding. We thank you that your mercy is there. We thank you that your love is being manifested toward us. Lord God, we thank you that you are everything we need. And Lord, here we are. We're declaring that we need you, Lord Jesus. We need you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Work in our heart. Work in our life today, Lord Jesus.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you're cleansing. Thank you, Lord, that you're perfecting. Thank you, Lord, that you're revealing. Thank you, Lord, that you are healing and restoring. Thank you, Lord, that you're bringing truth into our life. Hallelujah. That we're no longer the same. We don't belong to ourselves, but we belong to you. Thank you for that great truth. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. You are my healer. You are my restorer. You are my Savior. You are my God. You are my Redeemer. You are my lover of my soul. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are everything. And to make it holy. Hallelujah. To you only do we come to the Lord. We stand in you alone. Take what we've heard today, apply it, understand it, and let God work in our life that which is good. Let His grace work. God bless you. Greet each other in Christ before you go. Continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. God bless you. We'll see you tonight, 6 o'clock. We trust today's message was a blessing to your life. You can reach Pastor Tom Pennington and Crossroads of Albuquerque Ministries at 5200 Marble Avenue, Northeast, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87110. Or call us 
at 505-837-1414. Donations are greatly appreciated. A list of DVD and CD sermons is available upon request. Our pastor refers to the New King James Holy Bible.